The Grand Canyon is a steep-sided canyon carved by the Colorado River in Arizona, United States. The Grand Canyon is 277 miles, 446 kilometers long, up to 18 miles, 29 kilometers wide, and attains a depth of over a mile, 6,093 feet or 1,857 meters. The canyon and adjacent rim are contained within Grand Canyon National Park, the Kaibab National Forest, Grand Canyon Parashant National Monument, the Hualapai Indian Reservation, the Havasupai Indian Reservation, and the Navajo Nation. The surrounding area is contained within the Bajmuavjo Itakukvini ancestral footprints of the Grand Canyon National Monument. President Theodore Roosevelt was a major proponent of the preservation of the Grand Canyon area and visited it on numerous occasions to hunt and enjoy the scenery. Nearly two billion years of Earth's geological history have been exposed as the Colorado River, and its tributaries cut their channels through layer after layer of rock, while the Colorado Plateau was uplifted. While some aspects about the history of incision of the canyon are debated by geologists, several recent studies support the hypothesis that the Colorado River established its course through the area about five to six million years ago. Since that time, the Colorado River has driven the downcutting of the tributaries and retreat of the cliffs, simultaneously deepening and widening the canyon. For thousands of years, the area has been continuously inhabited by Native Americans, who built settlements within the canyon and its many caves. The Pueblo people considered the Grand Canyon a holy site and made pilgrimages to it. The first European known to have viewed the Grand Canyon was Garcia Lopez de Cardenas from Spain, who arrived in 1540. The ancestral Puebloans were a Native American culture centered on the present-day Four Corners area of the United States. They were the first people known to live in the Grand Canyon area. The cultural group has often been referred to in archaeology as the Anasazi. Although the term is not preferred by the modern Puebloan peoples, the word Anasazi is Navajo for enemy ancestors or alien ancestors. Archaeologists still debate when this distinct culture emerged. The current consensus, based on terminology defined by the Pecos classification, suggests their emergence was around 1200 BCE during the Basket Maker II era. Beginning with the earliest explorations and excavations, researchers have believed that the ancestral Puebloans are ancestors of the modern Pueblo peoples. In addition to the ancestral Puebloans, a number of distinct cultures have inhabited the Grand Canyon area. The Cojonina lived to the west of the Grand Canyon between 500 and 1200 CE. The Cojonina were ancestors of the Yuman, Havasupai, and Hualapai peoples who inhabit the area today. The Sinagua were a cultural group occupying an area to the southeast of the Grand Canyon between the Little Colorado River and the Salt River between approximately 500 and 1425 CE. The Sinagua may have been ancestors of several Hopi clans. By the time of the arrival of Europeans in the 16th century, newer cultures had evolved. The Hualapai inhabit a 100 mile, 160 kilometers, stretch along the pine-clad southern side of the Grand Canyon. The Havasupai have been living in the area near Cataract Canyon since the beginning of the 13th century occupying an area the size of Delaware. The Southern Paiutes live in what is now Southern Utah and Northern Arizona. The Navajo, or Daine, live in a wide area stretching from the San Francisco peaks eastwards towards the Four Corners. Archeological and linguistic evidence suggests the Navajo descended from the Athabascan people near Great Slave Lake, Canada, who migrated after the 11th century. In the mythology of some Third Mesa Hopi communities, the Grand Canyon was the location humankind arose out of the Third World from a Sipapu. In September 1540, under orders from the conquistador Francisco Vasquez de Coronado to search for the fabled seven cities of Shibola, Captain Garcia Lopez de Cardenas, along with Hopi guides and a small group of Spanish soldiers, traveled to the south rim of the Grand Canyon between Desert View and Morin Point. Pablo de Melgrosa, Juan Galeras, and a third soldier descended some one-third of the way into the canyon until they were forced to return because of lack of water. In their report, they noted that some of the rocks in the canyon were bigger than the Great Tower of Seville, Giralda. It is speculated that their Hopi guides likely knew routes to the canyon floor, but may have been reluctant to lead the Spanish to the river. No Europeans visited the canyon again for more than 200 years.
Fathers Francisco Atanasio Dominguez and Silvestre Vélez de Escalante were two Spanish priests who, with a group of Spanish soldiers, explored southern Utah and traveled along the north rim of the canyon in Glen and Marble Canyons in search of a route from Santa Fe to California in 1776. They eventually found a crossing, formerly known as the Crossing of the Fathers, that today lies under Lake Powell. Also in 1776, Fray Francisco Garces, a Franciscan missionary, spent a week near Havasupai unsuccessfully attempting to convert a band of Native Americans to Christianity. He described the canyon as profound. James Ohio Patty, along with a group of American trappers and mountain men, may have been the next European to reach the canyon in 1826. Jacob Hamblin, a Mormon missionary, was sent by Brigham Young in the 1850s to locate suitable river crossing sites in the canyon. Building good relations with local Hualapai and white settlers, he reached the Crossing of the Fathers, crossed the location that would become Lee's Ferry on a raft in 1858, and Pierce Ferry, later operated by and named for Harrison Pierce. He also acted as an advisor to John Wesley Powell before his second expedition to the Grand Canyon, serving as a diplomat between Powell and the local native tribes to ensure the safety of his party. In 1857, Edward Fitzgerald Beale was superintendent of an expedition to survey a wagon road along the 35th parallel from Fort Defiance, Arizona to the Colorado River. He led a small party of men in search of water on the Coconino Plateau near the canyon's south rim. On September 19th, near present-day National Canyon, they came upon what May Humphrey Stacy described in his journal as a wonderful canyon, 4,000 feet deep. Everybody in the party admitted that he never before saw anything to match or equal this astonishing natural curiosity. Also in 1857, the U.S. War Department asked Lieutenant Joseph Ives to lead an expedition to assess the feasibility of an upriver navigation from the Gulf of California. On December 31, 1857, Ives embarked from the mouth of the Colorado in the Stern Wheeler Steamboat Explorer. His party reached the lower end of Black Canyon on March 8, 1858, then continued on by rowboat past the mouth of the Virgin River after the explorer struck a rock. Ives led his party east into the canyon. They may have been the first Europeans to travel the Diamond Creek drainage. In his report upon the Colorado River of the West to the Senate in 1861, Ives states that the marvelous story of Cardenas that had formed for so long a time the only record concerning this rather mythical locality was rather magnified than detracted from by the accounts of one or two trappers who professed to have seen the cannon. According to the San Francisco Herald, in a series of articles run in 1853, Captain Joseph R. Walker in January 1851 with his nephew James T. Walker and six men traveled up the Colorado River to a point where it joined the Virgin River and continued east into Arizona traveling along the Grand Canyon and making short exploratory side trips along the way. Walker is reported to have said he wanted to visit the Moki, Hopi Indians, who he had met briefly before and found exceptionally interesting. In 1858, John Strong Newberry became probably the first geologist to visit the Grand Canyon. In 1869, Major John Wesley Powell set out to explore the Colorado River and the Grand Canyon in the first expedition down the canyon. Powell ordered a shipwright to build four reinforced white wall rowboats from Chicago and had them shipped west on the newly completed Continental Railroad. He hired nine men, including his brother Walter, and collected provisions for 10 months. They set out from Green River, Wyoming, on May 24th. On June 7th, they lost one of their boats, one three of their food, and other badly needed supplies. As a result, the team eventually had to subsist on starvation rations. Passing through, or portaging around, a series of dangerous rapids, the group passed down the Green River, reaching its confluence with the Colorado River, near present-day Moab, Utah, on July 17th. Continuing on down the Colorado River, the party encountered more rapids and falls. On August 28, 1869, faced with what some felt to be impassable rapids, three men left the expedition on foot in an attempt to reach a settlement 75 miles, 121 kilometers away. Ironically, the remaining members went safely through the rapids on August 29, 1869, while Seneca Howland, Oromal Howland, 
and William H. Dunn were murdered. The area through which the three men traveled was marked by tensions between farming and hunting Shibwits and incoming Mormon settlers. Which group was responsible for killing the three men has been hotly debated. Powell himself visited the area the following year and was told, through a Mormon interpreter, that the Shivwits had mistakenly killed the men, believing them to be prospectors who had murdered an Indian woman. He chose to smoke a peace pipe with them. Powell went on to become the first director of the U.S. Bureau of Ethnology of the Smithsonian Institution, 1879-1902, and the second director of the U.S. Geological Survey, 1881-1894. He was the first to use the term Grand Canyon in 1871. Previously, it had been called the Big Canyon. In 1889, Frank M. Brown wanted to build a railroad along the Colorado River to carry coal. He, his chief engineer, Robert Brewster Stanton, and 14 others started to explore the Grand Canyon in poorly designed cedarwood boats with no life preservers. Brown drowned in an accident near Marble Canyon. Stanton made new boats and proceeded to explore the Colorado all of the way to the Gulf of California. The Grand Canyon became an official national monument in 1908 and a national park in 1919. U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt visited the Grand Canyon in 1903. An avid outdoorsman and staunch conservationist, Roosevelt established the Grand Canyon Game Preserve on November 28, 1906. Livestock grazing was reduced but predators such as mountain lions, eagles, and wolves were eradicated. Roosevelt, along with other members of his conservation group, the Boone and Crockett Club, helped form the National Parks Association, which in turn lobbied for the Antiquities Act of 1906, which gave Roosevelt the power to create national monuments. Once the act was passed, Roosevelt immediately added adjacent national forest lands and redesignated the preserve a U.S. national monument on January 11, 1908, Opponents such as land and mining claim holders blocked efforts to reclassify the monument as a U.S. national park for 11 years. Grand Canyon National Park was finally established as the 17th U.S. national park by an act of Congress signed into law by President Woodrow Wilson on February 26, 1919. The federal government administrators who manage park resources face many challenges. These include issues related to the recent reintroduction into the wild of the highly endangered California condor, air tour overflight noise levels, water rights and management disputes, and forest fire management. The canyon's ecosystem was permanently changed after the construction of the Glen Canyon Dam in 1963. Average flood levels dropped from 85,000 to 8,000 cubic foot sec. In the absence of natural flooding, Sandbars and beaches eroded and invasive species began to displace native species. Federal officials started releasing floods in the Grand Canyon in hopes of restoring its ecosystem, beginning with 1996, 2004, and 2008. In 2018, the Department of Interior started experimenting with adaptive management of the Glen Canyon Dam, using a high-flow experiment, HFE, water release, to shift volumes of sand and monitoring effects such as the dispersal of invasive tamarisk seeds. However, as of 2022, extreme drought has caused water levels in Lake Powell to drop so much that a planned release of water has been delayed to ensure that the Glen Canyon Dam can continue to generate hydropower.